Hello, my name is Cami Woodruff, and I'm going to go into the resources of retrain staff in the ENT world. Let's get started. The background information is the business as we know it is Family ENT and Sinus Center of Harrison. It was started in 2009 by Dr. Patricia Bell. In 2012, we both relocated and added new staff. We went into a newly built building. And likewise, in 2016, we expanded farther with staff, with new equipment, and new procedures in office ones. However, there has been no expansion in the audiology department since the creation of Family ENT and Simon Center in 2009. This is creating difficulties with expanding any farther in both otolaryngology and in audiology. Likewise, it is affecting schedule for both departments. Therefore, the purpose of this project is to identify what jobs Family ENT and Sinus Center's current staff can do to help the audiologists that do not cross over into her licensure. Likewise, we are wanting to develop a long-term viable solution to the understaffing in the audiology department by retraining current staff to help with the audiology department through further education and licensure. So, our current problems. Even before reconsidering like retraining staff, we need to think about a few different things. For example, our audiologist is doing simple jobs, but the problem is without um, crossing over into licensure, there are rules both nationally and in the state of Arkansas associated with the audiology that we cannot cross over into unless we want to have legal problems. And um, therefore we need to research ototechs, audiology assistants, and hearing instrument dispensers. As they are, um, as they exist in other states and nationally, but not within the state of Arkansas possibly, we need to look and see what exists here. Um, also, we need to consider current staff's use, cost efficiency, and the amount of time it's going to take to retrain current staff. Therefore, the problems are identified through five different methods of research. So, the research methods is in-office surveys, phone interviews, in-person in interviews, researching audiology laws in Arkansas, and also hearing instrument dispenser laws in Arkansas. So let's go over first staff surveys. The questions were, do you believe that retraining staff to assist our audiologists would be a benefit to family ENT and sinus center? And if so, in what ways? Second, what tasks do you believe an assistant could do that would be a benefit to our audiologist? And third, recognizing we are at capacity, what is the biggest constraint to our audiology department? And finally, where do you think the biggest opportunities um, lie to improve our audiology department? Now, let's go over the results, which were quite interesting. Over 50% of our staff believe that an additional help to the audiologist would improve our schedule. Likewise, another 50% believe that helping our audiologist would improve both efficiency and patient care. And 80% of the staff members believe that helping with hearing aids and hearing aid repairs would help improve and assist our audiologist. 90% of staff members believe that it is the time is the biggest constraint within the audiology department. Now next is our phone interviews. Now the phone interviews, like I had said before, um, I don't want to go into all the questions, but just was asking what is legal within the state of Arkansas. Therefore, this is what I found out. The Arkansas um, Board of Examiners of Speech, Language, Pathology, and Audiology stated audiology assistants do not exist within the state of Arkansas. However, we can do jobs to help our audiologists within the administrative assistant field that do not cross over into her licensure. Also, the Arkansas State Medical Board stated they are unaware that ototexes exist within the state of Arkansas. And finally, the State Board of Hearing Aid Instrument Dispenser stated that hearing instrument dispenser licensures does exist within the state of Arkansas. So that is very important. Next, audiology loss. An audiologist cannot misrepresent an assistant, therefore we can never call them. Um, basically audiology assistants because in other states it requires training and licensure and we cannot misrepresent staff so we can call them a helper but we can never label them audiology assistant legally within the state of Arkansas. 
Also, um, the helper to the audiologist cannot come in direct contact with patient. For example, you cannot touch a patient if um, you do your crossing into audiology laws in Arkansas. And now listed above is the administrative assistant or staff members can do the following. It's about seven jobs. I'm going to go into that later, so I don't want to go over this right now. Okay, so now hearing instrument dispenser laws in Arkansas were incredibly fascinating. Licensure only takes one year under an audiologist internship. And it takes three different tests required with the actual internship fees and licensure. And it will cost about $850 total. And um, it only requires for the person who's doing this internship two years of college education. And the hearing instrument distributor can do the following. They can uh, dispense hearing aids. They can do hearing tests for normal sensor neural hearing loss, which these are two things that we need help with currently. Likewise, they can do hearing aid repairs and follow-ups. Okay, so areas of concern, actual implementation. That is what we need to go into next. We need to know actual implement implementation, cost, and time of everything that we are thinking about. So, proposed implementation. Phase one will be to train current administrative staff in different audiology or jobs that they can legally do. There are seven jobs that are listed above that um, would be a benefit to our audiologist. So checking in and fixing minor problems with hearing aids is the first one. Mailing hearing aids in, checking in hearing aids from the mail, filing back hearing aid folders in correct order of papers, end of the day cleaning on Tuesday through Friday, morning test suite prepping Tuesday through Friday and prepping for hearing aid fittings on Thursdays only. As I like gave you before, Steve, um, a packet of information that also lists the step-by-step -step process that's suggested to implement these. It will take about two months to implement and like you had asked me before, it's going to be like um, probably two hours a week extra from what they're currently doing as in time, but it would be stretched out over an entire week maybe at most, you know, 15 to 20 minutes per time, depending on what they're needing to do. Um, and it will be six months to one year to get mastered by the current administrative staff because essentially what we're doing is we're adding to their workload. Okay, now the phase two of the proposed implementation is to take a member of administrative staff that have been in, in like, and basically put them through an internship with our audiologist to become a hearing instrument dispenser in over a year's time. And so it will take about a year to do this internship, which will be you know, enough time to get them up and running and trained. And phase three is if there is a continued expansion to hire an additional audiologist when the hearing instrument dispenser has reached its capacity. If the expansion continues in the next three years, this is possibly something we're gonna need to reconsider. Now there are many benefits to this. The benefits of phase one is it will free up time for our audiologist and it will help her with you know, time for charting and to improve patient care, it's going to help. It's gonna be an overall uh, better efficiency on the schedule in both departments as most of the stuff from audiology crosses over into otolaryngology throughout the week. And it will provide current staff with the ability to directly help a patient with minor hearing aids instead of them checking them in, them having to wait for a few days, and then having to come back. It's affecting their quality of life when they don't have access to their hearing aid. Now, the benefits of phase two. It will take two months to repay the cost of training for um, a hearing instrument dispenser through audio-only patients, which is not bad at all. Additionally, 95% of our current adult hearing patients at the clinic are normal sensorineural hearing loss, which is great because a hearing instrument dispenser can do this. A hearing instrument disp distributor um, is also able to um, help our audiologist free up and change her schedule, and this will provide benefits for both sides of the clinic. Now, recommendations. Phase one will directly help the current problem that is being faced, and phase two will continue to improve the audiology department and will fill in the gap for expansion. Now, both are needed to improve efficiency and utilize current resources. Now, we need to consider a few things. The criteria for the recommendation. 
cost. Phase one will cost Family ENT and Sinus Center's current staff nothing as they will be utilizing current staff, resources, and time to implement these new things. Phase two will cost you $800, $850 to implement with a current staff member. Now that does also does not include the cost of a yearly licensure renewal, which will only be $50. Now, second for criteria recommendation is urgency. Phase one needs to be implemented immediately as it will only take two months to completely implement and it will take six to 12 months to master. Now, phase two will take one year to acquire a license, so it would probably be great to implement this as soon as possible with the internship so that we can help with the long-term needs of the audiology department. So finally, are you hearing me at this great opportunity for expansion and improvement within the audiology department? And that is it. Thank you very much for your time. Time. Are there any questions? Uh, yes. Well, first, I'd like to thank you for your time, and your effort. You've done a very good job pulling all this together and, and researching the angles and the state requirements for an area that we clearly do need help with. So, a, a couple questions. One about phase one. Uh, you had indicated that um, we thought some time could be reallocated. Did you take any kind of a look into you know the capacity of the current team that is doing that work and? how much time they would need to reallocate for these additional services to support audiology and if they have that time to reallocate. Well, currently, you know, we are, uh, with our current staff, we aren't having issues with uh, having too little of time. We actually have extra time overages, especially on Mondays and Fridays because on Fridays, our audiologist is the only provider and on Mondays, there are no providers in. And so, we have enough wiggle room between all the administrative staff to basically introduce those jobs and if we spread it around several administrative staff members like you know the four up front it would really help <laughs> to improve the speed of eat things and if you consider it's only going to take uh, about two hours a week you know at most to introduce all these different things and each little stint of time or period would at most be about 15 minutes like for example the mailing off the hearing aid because you're essentially doing step one and step two a combo mm -hmm. of both basically looking over the hearing aid seeing what's wrong giving it to the audiologist because you can't repair it the audiologist telling you to send it out and then the whole per different hearing aid brand you have to fill out the different sheets mm -hmm. and that can be time consuming that at most will be the longest process you have and i'll take 15 minutes okay so so you would envision this more being rather than than you mentioned two hours two hours being dedicated you know a certain time period during the week it would just be um, miscellaneous tasks that could be pulled out of the audiology world and interspersed around other things that people are doing now anyway exactly it's not like it's going to be like if the patient's at your window and you can do minor hearing aid repair quickly, that's you know obviously priority that just hits boom. But a lot of the other things are going to be more like you're just going to integrate it in slowly, but it's not going to be time consuming or difficult. And you can put it a little bit um, on the back burner compared to some of the other stuff. But you know if you're going to prioritize tasks. Great. And I, I saw already in the document that you you'd kind of laid out some some rough steps as to what each of those different processes would be and what they would need to do to complete them. So thanks for putting that together. No problem. It's like appendix mm -hmm. is A through K does list out step by step what to do. And so hopefully that will just help transition people into the idea of it. And then as they're fine tuning it, we can change those steps. Wonderful. And uh, one other question. So as you, as you talked about um, uh, the kind of phase two, which is a, a hearing aid dispenser, which would um, actually allow us probably um, not only additional support but actual billable and revenue generating services. Um, it mentioned a two-year degree so on the team that we currently have um, there's probably only one person that we would identify as, as having that criteria, right? It was a two-year degree? Yes. Okay. Now in your research did it mention anything or did you hear anything about what kind of a two-year degree is is desired or or wanted just, or it just like two years of formal education that's it so. they don't even actually say associates so it could just be someone who's been kind of in and out of school that's met the two-year criteria hour and if you consider full-time is like 
12 hours, so someone with 24 hours of credit. <laughs> gotcha. So any, any kind of a two-year, either the completion of general studies or an actual associate's degree would qualify for that? Yes. Gotcha. And so you're out of your current administrative staff, it would be Peggy because mm -hmm. she has um, an associate's or maybe two, yep. two associates. So she would be able to do it and qualify for the position. But then um, I don't know if you would be able to consider or not with her current tasks that she's doing for a hearing instrument dispenser. However, when you're, you know, future tense hiring additional administrative staff, you could look at it as a part of the criteria for hiring. Absolutely. Great. Wonderful. That, those are the main two questions I had. That's very thorough. Very well done. I really appreciate all your time. Thank you very much. You bet. All right. Thanks.